Yo, what's going on guys? Um, before I get into the video, I got this camera, um, the Canon E05 M200, I, right now I really don't like it, it's a massive, massive staticky noise, like, really, really off-putting. And I can get rid of it, I don't know what the... I cannot figure out for the life of me how to get rid of it. If you guys know, please let me know. But yeah. Um, in this interview, I talked to Craig Nye, who plays Hill in Fear the Walking Dead. So sit back and relax and enjoy the video. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah. How's it going? It's it's all good. How are you? I'm well. I'm well. Um, I my sincere apologies for being so late. Uh, no works. Crazy traffic. How has things been? I know it's been crazy in in Texas, but <laughs> to say the least. Yeah, between the freeze and everything else that's going on here. And things are good though. It's, you know, the weather's back to normal, which is nice. Uh, it's actually yeah. getting, getting nice outside. So, I mean, the, the freeze was fun other than the fact that, you know, so many people lost power and yeah. water and, you know, it was kind of really difficult. I was really lucky. I had power most of the time, but that's lost good. water for three and a half days. Um, survived it. That's that's so crazy. Like I was speaking to Mo last week about it, and it's just I remember how bad it was. Yeah, it was crazy. Uh, it's it it was a little shocking. I mean, it was definitely shocking. One, you forget how easy your life is, how accustomed to yeah. these these conveniences we are. You know, like uh, these basic necessities that we kind of take for granted that are, that are provided for us. And, um, uh, and it was, it was a little nerve wracking though, particularly here because also on top of, you know, not having power or electricity, a lot of people didn't have heat and water. Um, everybody's movement was really, really restricted even more than with COVID because yeah. nobody had the vehicles. I luckily actually have a vehicle that's four wheel drive. Oh, but um, so I was able to drive around and help out with some friends and whatnot. But uh, many people, you know, they're kind of stuck and where they were or they were going to try to walk somewhere. And, you know, there was no really nowhere to go because nothing was open. <laughs> yeah, that was I was just seeing on the news that I'm seeing what Mo said. I'm just like, we've never had anything like that here. And it was just so scary for you guys. And I'm glad and I'm glad you're safe. And that's I mean, that's the best thing is that you're. You are, you're all safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where are you? I'm in England. I'm um, in Plymouth. It's like down the bottom. Like no one, no one has ever heard of it, really. Yeah. <laughs> but it's we have, a, we have a Plymouth Rock here. So oh, right. <laughs> I think I've heard of Plymouth. I mean, Plymouth in some states, or maybe just Texas, but it's it's pretty cool. Yeah. I have a yeah. bunch of uh, I'll probably feel the walk of their questions and some. Um, other random questions about your teaching and stuff, but I'll uh, sure. start off with what inspired you to become an actor? Um, honest answer, um, I'm a total Star Wars generation kid, you know, like the OG original stuff. Um, so I was a huge fan, had all the toys. Um, I was a big movie kid, um, you know, and, you know, post Star Wars, everything Harrison Ford was doing was fascinating to me. I saw Blade Runner at a very young age, didn't really totally comprehend the movie, but it was impressive to watch. Um, and I, it just seemed like a lot of fun, really. And um, I didn't know much about it. I didn't grow up in a family that was close to the film industry or a big arts family. Um, so I had no idea like really how you get involved and I right after I graduated I wasn't even in like drama in high school um, but right after I graduated high school I had some friends that were involved in like a 
community, local community theater in the town I grew up in. And they were doing a show and I was like, well, I want to like try out or audition or whatever. And, and they cast me in a really small role in the show, but I kind of got the bug from that. I was like, oh, wow, this is cool. You know, and I was at the time trying to, I was going to school, going to college, trying to figure out what I was going to do and not being a great student. <laughs> um, so uh, I was like, man, this acting thing's fun. You know, people do this. Maybe I'll move to New York or LA. And a good friend of mine that I hadn't spoken to in a few years called me up randomly and was like, hey, I'm going, I'm moving to LA. Go with me. And I was like, all right, let's do it. <laughs> that sounds just amazing. I love LA. But it's very busy, but just amazing. Yeah, it's a it's a crazy city. I like I'm a big fan of New York, which I've never lived in, but I've spent some time in. And um, LA's a bit it's it's big and sprawling, and uh, yeah. it's always a traffic issue. So that's definitely yeah. <laughs> um, I know you're a, you're a teacher too, so or, or, I don't know if you call yourself a teacher, but you teach. I do. Um, is, do you teach a certain method? Because I know there's the Strasbourg. I think I pronounce it the method. Right. Yeah. There's a few different methods obviously or a whole kind of li lineage to acting styles um born out of kind of stanislavsky which was a russian uh teacher director um who basically con invented you know kind of the system of contemporary acting training which is you know kind of evolved and and been improved on by strasberg adler meisner they all came from the same uh group and theater group out of New York. Um, I teach, my focus is uh, script analysis. Um, and um, I was an actor in LA for years. And um, I, I studied with a couple of good teachers, you know, and I was what I would classify as a, a good acting class actor. Yeah. You know, I was kind of going to class and trying to impress my friends. And um, I wasn't, I wasn't doing a lot of work homework outside of class you know like I had I had some amount of talent I guess and and kind of just kind of guts um but um there's some technical aspects to working like in film and television that I have found personally that a lot of acting classes and teachers don't focus on um and they don't um and you know I know like in Britain or England, um, you know, like I'm always fascinated by uh, English or British actors, you yeah. know, and, and and their skill level and the the uh, how specific the detail, you know. Um, and I grew up. I, I wanted to be Gary Oldman when I grew up. He's like my hero. Um, He's amazing. Yeah, and. Um, but we don't, you know, there isn't the same opportunity. Or I, I don't know exactly how it works, but it's it's not as accepted a thing here to go join, you know, like a local theater company or or, or group. And and I don't know how it exactly works, but you know, to start doing Shakespeare and other things at a younger age, which I think is obviously a tremendous way to kind of cut your teeth as an actor and and the things that you learn. Um, so I was bumming around LA again, you know, I kind of went out there on a whim, you know, I knew I wanted to get an acting, but I had no idea what that was, what that was or what that was all about. I didn't even know what a headshot and resume was when I landed in LA. And uh, luckily I, you know, I got a job at a restaurant. I met a lady there who introduced me to my first acting coach, um, a guy by the name of Arthur Mendoza, who's like Benicio del Toro's mentor and some other people. Um, and he came from the Adler, uh, he had, been one of Stella Adler's proteges and uh, I learned that method and and got a tremendous like theater background and foundation from him primarily like contemporary American uh, theater writers but um, you know I mean well pretty broad range but we, I didn't do a lot of study of Shakespeare um, so that kind of led to years later fast forward years later I found myself um, I had gone to LA and then it didn't exactly turn out to be what I wanted it to be, you know? Um, and I did not, Matthew McConaughey also being from Texas was taking all my roles and I didn't oh, know right. how, how he was getting them, you know? <laughs> um, I say that jokingly, I, I don't actually personally know him, but um, <laughs> a lot of mutual friends. 
Uh, and I just realized years later, I was like, wow, there's this whole skill set that um, I didn't learn in acting class. Uh, I had actually gotten into casting here in Texas and I started watching actors and I was like, oh, wow, here's things that they need to know. And it really kind of set off a light bulb for me. Um, and I think it's, I think if you don't have the opportunities to get on a set, you know, um, and, and work with other actors that know what they're doing, there's a lot of things you just won't, you won't or can't learn in an acting class, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I realized that there was all that, you know, there were these things about understanding the story, understanding the scene, understanding how the scene works in the context of, you know, the episode or the film, you know, and they're all like, you know, they're kind of like puzzle pieces or gears or dominoes, you know, and, and one scene, they, they, you know, one goes to the next, goes to the next, goes yeah. to the next. And if they don't fall a certain way, uh, they don't tell the same story, if that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense, yeah. And, you know, I've heard for years, like in acting class and stuff, that an, an actor, there's no right, there's no right way to, a scene can be played a thousand different ways and the words don't matter. And I'm now would be the first to tell you, the words do matter because somebody really took a lot of time and, and painstaking energy and effort to, to write those words. Um, and they're usually very specific, you know, particularly on a higher level TV show. Um, and yes, you can play a scene a thousand ways, but the writer only saw it one way when they wrote it. Yeah, that's true. So understanding, being able to get a concept of that as an actor before you go to audition for a piece, I think is, is super critical. You can certainly do it any way you want. And obviously you're gonna bring your own thing to it. But so that's what I focus on. I focus on text script analysis and, and storytelling, you know, in that sense for the actor. Um, it's, it's almost like teaching a little bit more about writing than about acting. Yeah. <laughs> do you do that now or is it um, finished for COVID? No, I do do it online currently. You know, I do do Zoom classes. That's good. So, yeah. yeah. Um, I didn't realize I was a big fan of uh, Breaking Bad. I didn't realize you were in it for an episode. Yes. Yeah. That was. How was that? Because that you know you're you're in two of the biggest AMC shows, which is amazing. I know. I, I and I feel really lucky. Um, and I'm I'm super grateful to those guys. Um, I now I'm ready to be in the next AMC show too as well. <laughs> um, uh, that was fantastic. I was actually working. I so I'm based in um, Austin, Texas, yeah. and uh, I was working on a TV show that was filming here. Um, um, and uh, I got the opportunity to go to Albuquerque, New Mexico, to film for Breaking Bad. It was a tr really a tremendous experience. Um, I, I, I this may not make sense to you. I liken it to like being in LA and then going to New York, like. If you've ever been to New York, or I imagine it's probably similar, like uh, being in a suburb somewhere and then yeah. going into London proper, you know. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, that, I get what you mean. Yeah, I've, done a lot, yeah. I've, I've been to America. I've done a lot of bit of a bit of traveling. So I've been to a couple hmm. of states, and it's like so different everywhere. Right, exactly. And like when you go to New York, you know, you walk out of a subway or onto the street, and I mean, you know, typically before COVID, obviously, you know, like it everybody's it's busy and there's a really strong energy and people are going and doing things you know um i found personally like la and in california were a little more relaxed um and uh you know in in new york it felt like everybody had something to do in la it felt like nobody had a job or anything to do you know like everybody just had time for for coffee and a lounge at the beach you know um and so that it was like that for me with Breaking Bad, like the moment I stepped onto that set, I was like, now granted I was in season five. So, you know, they were, they were a well-oiled machine at that point, but it yeah. was really obvious that I was on a set with a lot of professionals, you know, like high level pros. Uh, Michelle McLaren, who directed the episode, you know, total champ, you know, he absolutely knew what she was doing. Um, and, um, uh, you know, um, Oh my God, the actor that I got to work with, um, 
Hank, the brother-in-law. Um, uh, oh my gosh. I, I, so, I can't think of his name. Yeah, it's so embarrassing. But he was, but even all the, you know, the all the the camera people and, you know, everybody that was working on that set, it was just really obvious. Like they were just high level pros. And, and, and that's a really fun feeling, you know, as, as, as an actor or just to be a part of something like that, you know? Um, so it was, it was, it was impressive. It was intense. It was great. I, I, you know, it was great to see how it all worked and, um, you kind of get to see what it can be, you know, um, a journeyman actor like me, I work in all different, you know, levels and caliber of, of productions. And, you know, when you're working on lower budget things, you know, they just don't have the, the, the budget to, 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 to staff maybe as many people as they would, if they could, et, et cetera. And, and so it doesn't move the same, you know, that felt like, I felt like I was part of a military operation that was happening, you know? Yeah, that's such a such an amazing show. Did yeah. you know? I don't know if you I don't know if you've seen it on on your Instagram or someone's tagged you. You're you're you have trading cards on the uh, Walking Dead Universe Collection app. Oh no, I didn't know that. Yeah, you've got oh um well, I've got a few. There's a pretty there's pretty cool sets in. Um, there's like super rare. I mean, they don't really mean much in real life, but it's they are they are pretty cool in this. For you, it's you're on a on a card somewhat. Ah, oh. are you looking at one right now or? Yeah, this one. This one's my favorite one. It is motion. Oh. oh wow, cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that's just weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. Uh, I didn't know that. That's really cool. I hadn't seen those, uh, but it makes sense. I have some. Uh, a, people on Instagram that uh, send me, um, you know, graphic renderings of me and different things. And I'm always like curious, like how they get these images, but maybe they got them from that. I don't yeah, know. I'm kicking off the fear ones. Were you a fan before you were cast or do you have no idea about it? In Fear of the Walking Dead? Yeah, were you a, were you a fan before you were cast? Actually, I was not, no. Um, I had watched the first few seasons of The Walking Dead and yeah. I was a fan of that, but I had, in all honesty, I had petered out. I don't, um, there's so much to consume out there for, for me as an actor and as I'm always trying to kind of have a little bit of a feel for the tone and the pace of everything, yeah. I find it really difficult to kind of follow through with a lot of shows. And I just kind of assumed that since fear that fear was a kind of a spinoff of the walking dead that it was the same vibe and they're not really you know there is definitely a different tone to the two shows which i had to recognize and learn and pick up um i'm a fan of it now <laughs> yeah, yeah season six has been incredible so incredible so far oh good good yeah, i'm good. just i'm just loving it yeah i had uh, after i did a little research i'd heard that there was a little like uh like that season five wasn't quite what everybody had maybe hoped and and that yeah, there has I been a lot of it. what's that i liked it people would, i was speaking to my friend he was like it's, it's pretty man I, I really enjoyed the fifth season and the fourth oh good but one and two were a bit slow but it's okay. so much better now mm. it is, you guys do such an amazing job and i it comes back soon right march no april april I'm so good yeah um how would how did the audition come about to get the role of hill so i had um you know the that show is filming here in austin texas also and um i had auditioned for a character in the first episode of season five uh, i i can't remember the character's name now or who it was uh, um but I know it was somebody who uh, was also like maybe driving a, a Mack truck, I think um, friends with, you know, Mo's character. Um, anyway, I had I'd done that. I'd submitted an aud audition on tape for that. And um, apparently they liked it a lot because the casting office, my agent would just call me every so often and be like, or email me and say, hey, they've resubmitted you for a different role on Fear the Walking Dead, you know, in just FYI from your old tapes. 
So, and that doesn't happen very often. So, you know, like they had one tape and they, the casting people submitted me five or six different times for different characters, excuse me, in season five. Um, oddly enough, I um, was coaching some actors uh, the day that I got the audition for uh, the season six yeah. um, audition. And I almost didn't do it uh, because I was so busy coaching uh, some other actors and a couple that actually read for that same scene and same same character. Sure. And um, but I had had it. There was an actor who was in town, and I was coaching him for a different project. And I was just super busy. And I was like, but I, you know, because I had a relationship have a relationship with the casting people, and they had been so kind to me through trying to get me a role on the show in season five. I was like, I better do this, you know? And um, I just, you know, uh, audi I auditioned and they really liked my tape. Uh, and um, I got found out I got cast and then I found out that they want to do uh, that. They Every time what call is now. <laughs> of course, <laughs> of course. But yeah, sorry about that. Um, no, no, no worries. Um, so anyway, I almost didn't do the audition. I did and then, um, I was kind of, I didn't think twice about it. I, I, I honestly didn't even think I was going to get the role because the character description was a little, it was more like, uh, you know, the Justin Smith, the actor I worked with, who was kind of our, my, you know, my buddy on the show yeah. for a bit. Um, you know, it, it, the description was more like him, you know, kind of taller, more gruff, you know, and I thought, well, I'm probably not going to get cast as this anyway. And then they did cast me and I was great. And then they let me know that I was gonna be, you know, the right hand guy to yeah. uh, Jenny, you know, Colby's character, um, who's tremendous by the way. Colby is amazing. Yeah, I, I absolutely love her. Absolutely one of the sweetest, nicest people you'd ever wanna meet. And, you know, obviously a tremendous actress, but, you know, very warm and inviting and, and so much fun to work with. What was your uh, favorite scene of the film so far? Other than where we can't really do a lot of spoilers, but so far. Yeah, well, as I say, yeah, I can't I actually can't talk about it. It's there's an upcoming scene, um, and uh, there's an, uh, um, you know I <laughs> there's a new character that comes in and and some stuff like that. There's some exciting things that happen in this next part of season six and. Yeah, um, I have a great scene that I really love doing. Um, so it was it was super fun. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's all I can tell you. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, that makes sense. I don't I don't want to get in trouble. Have you had any creative say on how you know how he dresses or his just his personality? Uh, I mean a little. I think I was you know when I first came in, I met uh, Michael Satrazim as the uh, producer, director, um, and he, you know, was like, you know, this is new character. This is a little bit about his background, you know, you're, um, but you're welcome to make it, you know, it's an opportunity for you to kind of make it what you want. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we, there's, an, uh, and I'm going to blank on this name too, but the costume uh, designer for the show is, um, incredible woman and uh you know super talented and cool and takes such good care of all the actors um i yeah i kind of chose a certain attitude and and posture about the character you know and then i've had a few or you know certainly one like a couple of little lines or quick sayings that i've said that you know became something that were repeated in the show so i knew that the writers like that which is always fun um you know, uh, I would, uh, you know, I get a, I'm a, you get a little jealous of Colby because she gets all the great lines and uh, yeah, all the meaty dialogue and, um, you know, and so I, there's, I, you know, as an actor, you know, you're always kind of chomping at the bit to, to get, get in there a little bit more if you can, but um, yeah, I mean, I, they certainly gave me latitude to kind of make it my own, you know, and this character in particular. So, he's a really, he's a really, he's such a the whole group are just so. I like them. Like they're they're what made season six so good. 
Oh, wow. Thanks. I just, I wish, I just hope that everything goes high on it and you're all, you're all safe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, we'll, we'll, we'll see, see what happens. You know, it is, is it, finished, right? Sorry. You've just finished season six. Yes. I thought we finished filming a while ago, but I don't know why. But no, we, we had to stop. We, you know, that season six started at the end of uh, 2019. And then in, it was scheduled to be finished, I think in April or May of 2020. Um, and uh, we got into March uh, and obviously COVID happened and that shut everything down and nobody knew what was going to happen. So they, yeah. they, you know, they picked up filming again um, at the end of 2020 That's good. and uh, and then had to break for the holidays and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so anyway, yeah. Um, yeah, from, longest, longest time span for a season of TV ever, I think. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, just, it just feels so weird. Like, what do, like Walking Dead's back in now, and it just, you know, you know COVID's there, and it's just, it's just weird. Yeah, what do you mean? Like, is in just in the world, or? Yeah, in, you watch The Walking Dead, and they're like, you're in that, you know, you're dealing with the same stuff that they are. <laughs> you know, social distancing and well i mean it became yeah and it also became very surreal this whole pandemic after like you know you you go to work and you're on set all day and it's it's got this kind of you're in these great sets you know that have this dreary kind of apocalyptic feel and you're around all these zombies all day and, and you do that for 12 hours and then when COVID happened it was like wait a minute like this, <laughs> this is like you know art really is imitating life. It's getting really weird, you know, and this is crazy. Um, so yeah, it's kind of, kind of wild. For your, um, for season six, episode six, I believe. Yeah, the um, one with the quarry. How was filming in that? Cause that was such a, an amazing set. Like I, <laughs> that is probably the best episode of Fear ever. Oh, ever. wow. Cool. I really like that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, that was a blast. That was wild. Um, with all the, you know, the fire and the oil and the rig that they had to create for the exploding oil. Uh, it was raining down. Yeah. Um, such an incredible setup. And, um, you know, there, we were in a, uh, a rock quarry here. Um, and, you know, then they, you know, the, the, the set designers and the set dressers came in and, and decked it out the way they did. And it looked amazing. And, and then the whole crew that dealt with all the uh, effects, you know, and pyrotechnics, um, those, the, the, you know, all that fire, it was kind of great because it was cold at that time when we were filming it. So when they turned on the fire, we were all excited because, you know, we could, you, they were like, don't stand too close to it. But, you know, we were like, oh, great. We get to stay warm here in between takes and whatnot. But yeah, the set was incredible. And then the raining down of the oil and then they would, you know, um, the, the costumers would have to come over and spray us down with more this liquid that they made to look like the black oil. So, you know, we're, we're there all kind of just damp and covered in this stuff and then getting it sprayed more on our face and, and trying to make it. <laughs> yeah, so, look, for a reason, but it's yeah. such a just unique, a unique set and everything going on was just, it was just, everything happened at once. You know, mm -hmm. fire, explosions, walkers, you know, everything. Yeah. No, it, it was a great kind of, you know, plot twist there and, and, and added elements, you know, like building up the tension and, and, and you know, visually, it obviously it looks stunning, you know, um, but yeah, it was um, a lot of fun. If you, well, I don't know if you've caught up or seen much of the, the main show, but if you've, um, if you could cross over into the main show, is there any characters you would like to have had, would have scenes with? Oh, what a great question. Um, yeah, sure. Uh, um, uh, 
who's the I'm, i am terrible with names i should have looked up i should have thought about everybody's name before we did this that's, that's going to be a learning lesson like I, I, i'm not great with names in general and it's it's not a good thing in oh, my no, line of work no worries me too um oh the lady on the show the uh that has carol? the white hair um, yeah carol yeah yes carol golly i can't believe it. um you know she's such a kind of interesting and complex character you know kind of soulful and deep but also uh, yeah. you know not you know she's able to do whatever she needs to do and uh i think it'd be really fun to interact with her yeah. you know she's great to have a scene uh, and do some stuff with her would you consider hill or virginia villains <laughs> um not necessarily uh, that's a tricky question for me to answer in the sense of, um, you know, the, from my personal perception, yeah. and this is true, um, the writers are making some parallels to what's happening in season six to certain things that are happening in the world right now, you know? And I think that happens a lot. I mean, you know, it's 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 art, and and that's part of art's job, you know. Um, and um, so, uh, yeah, I would say um, for me, I you know, I think there's a lot of crazy things going on in the world politically, and um, I'm not in agreement with them. And um, you know, I think at least you know for. In, in the United States, you know, things have taken a turn for the better, but, you know, yeah. we've, got, we've got a ways to go. Um, and uh, I, so I see, so I see that with what the writers have done in, in, in season six. So in some ways, like personally, I'm like, well, yeah, of course, Virginia is a villain, <laughs> you know? Um, but no, I don't, as a character, no, I don't see them as villains. I see them, um, you know, as people that have been through tremendous experience and um are doing the best they can to survive sure. um you know uh i think you know the road to hell is paved with good intentions yeah. you know <laughs> um but you know i don't think and villains villains typically don't see themselves as villains anyway so that's a good point yeah i have a couple of questions from um uh a couple of friends um Jessica, who we both cosplay, and we, we would like to cosplay uh, Ginny and I'll do uh, Hill. Do you have any idea what the brands for the clothing are? Oh my gosh, I don't. Um, oh shoot, I wish I did. Um, it's such a variety of, of pieces. Um, yeah. I, I'll see if I can find out, um, they, you know, they, they may tell me I can't even like let that information out. They're pretty strict about some things, you know. Yeah, it's quite hard with um, the cosplayers. It's, they dig and dig and dig and dig just to find that, that, that it could be a screen accurate, you know, it's the smallest thing and still yeah. find it. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, I, I'm, I, I didn't, I rarely ever look at the labels in the clothing that yeah. they give me, you know, um, unless it's a piece that I'm like, oh, wow, this is cool. I, maybe I want to find this, you know, or, but then I'm usually just trying to see if I can talk them out of it. Like, you know, see if I'm like, oh, I, I wore this. You, we don't need to see it again, right? Can I just take it off? <laughs> they, they almost they're, never leave. They're pretty cool keeping one of the, um, the keys. The keys, yeah. Um, awesome. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think her name's Dwayne or Dane. Uh, asked if there was a real apocalypse, mm. who would you like as a um, survival partner from from fear? Ooh, that's a great question. Um, ooh, um, You know, we're not friends technically on the show, <laughs> um, 
but another speaking of like strong and awesome female uh actors uh you know june is incredibly like resourceful and talented and strong um and um you know i and she's also a super cool person in real life yeah. um and um so uh that would be you know that would be a good one i think i think i think her i don't know you know i think yeah, yeah. she's yeah I think she's got, I think she's another one of those, you know, again, like strong characters that is, has got an incredible amount of, of compassion and, 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 but is, is super intelligent and also able to do whatever needs to get done, you know? So. Would you survive, do you think? As in, as in Craig, you not heal you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'd like to think so. Um, I don't know. I mean, you know, we had, I had a little, a very small taste of it with our Texas freeze, you know, yeah. I mean, and it really brought up a lot for a lot of people because so many people, the, one of the things they said, they're like, wow, I, I really got to like revisit my survival skills, you know, knowledge because, um, you know, um, I, growing, I grow, I'm from Texas and I grew up here and I uh, used to hunt with my father when I was younger. So, you know, going out camping for a week and, you know, not yeah. having uh, electricity and things like that, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've done before um, and I like to do. So I, I'm not a survivalist, uh, but um, I think I'd be okay, you know. Um, I think America would we'll be pretty good. America, what's that? America would survive more than we do. We can, we wouldn't have like the guns. I mean, I know I'm like, not like, yeah, guns, but we don't have them like at all. So yeah, we were screwed. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, I, yeah, that, that's a tough thing. Like I go back and forth with that too. You know, we've got so many here, it's ridiculous. And it's such yeah. a big, um, and again, like I, being somebody who's from Texas and grew up in Texas, I've been around guns and got my first gun when I was very young, um, like seven years old, you know, um, oh. uh, not to like carry around with me, but you know, it was, it was a shotgun that my father gave me as a gift, you know, he taught me hunting with and um, uh, kept in the gun closet, you know, yeah. safely. Uh, but, um, you know, we do have a lot of guns and, and I know plenty of people that are, are into the heavy artillery, which I think is a bit, is way yeah. extreme. It's, that was that was my like, not really a fear, but you know, coming there being, when I come over back when it was 2019, I flew for um walk through Carolina and it was just knowing there's like so many guns around for me it was just weird like you saw a police officer you know carrying a gun I'm like we'd never see that here like it's just so different I mean I'm, I'm my girlfriend's dad's gonna take me shooting when I'm back well whenever the border's open yeah hopefully that's soon right 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 I, I agree I, and I, I I hope so too yeah it's, it, you know, it's fun. Guns are tons of fun to shoot. Um, um, you know, most of them, like, you know, a lot of them are just designed to do one thing. Um, and, uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I think we should, it'd be nice if we had better gun laws, you know, it's a little out of yeah, hand. That's understandable. Has, have you been invited to any Comic Cons yet? I actually have not, not yet, personally. So, um, yeah. yeah. Um, but I'd love to go. I've, uh, I've never, I've never been to one and I've been wanting to go. I've got some friends that are pretty, that are diehards, you know, and, yeah. uh, I would love uh, to go. Yeah. You could, uh, I'm surprised that the park might invite you soon. The, uh, the camp is in, it's in Sonoy. Um, they have, they get fear guests, they get, um, probably the main show guests and random ones now. Yeah. And yeah, they'll probably get you in. I hope UK cons get more fear guests too, because we don't, I don't think we've ever had a, like a, a, a fear guest at a huh. con. Interesting. And I'm sure there's something you like at some con. Like, I don't know what TV shows you like, but there's one that I've, I've recommended to everyone so far. There's, um, it's called Showmasters. Mm -hmm. And if, you know, yeah, yeah you would love it. There's, they, they get Star Wars actors there. Not like, not the big, but they have. They've had, they've had, um, Speaking of Star Wars, I'll show you something. Look behind me. 
That was pretty cool. Yeah, so that's like, uh, you know, that's an old uh, Darth Vader. It's an old case, carrying case for the figures. It's full of figures. That's an old like Millennium Falcon from the 80s. Yeah, yeah, like it's it's just cool having so many collectibles. You'll find those there. What is um Kai Fisher has been obviously um they've had a few of the big big ones there and you would love that one for if as if you like you Star Wars. There's so many get so many Star Wars guests there. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I was talking to uh Garrett Dillahunt, um yeah. Dory and John Dory, and um he had gone down to um one of uh the Comic Con in Brazil. And uh, cool. said he had a ton of fun down there. I think he's been to a few others. Um, yeah. But, yeah, it sounds like a good time. I haven't met him yet because I, I regretfully wasn't too big on fear when I was in the con he was at. Ah. And then you watch it again and like, oh, just oh. regret. Yeah. <laughs> I regret. Happy, but for lost. Yeah. That was. He, you, I mean, I, I, maybe you already have, but like he's another super great guy and if you've seen other of his work as an actor he's very talented i've i've only seen him in fear but of, the only one i did know other than if you out of out of the walking the universe was maggie grace mm -hmm. the one I, really, I really knew yeah but it's they're just amazing cast um i'm all out of questions it's been it's been good it's been really fun to just chat and get to know you as an actor and it's been amazing yeah great thank you so much i really appreciate the invite i uh uh thank you very much for your your patience with getting it together with my yeah, response yeah, okay that'd be good yeah was this your first interview for fear oh uh, yeah oh that's cool yeah, i always I always look up to see if i can get questions or something but there wasn't any i think like, great <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm flattered. You know, there's so many other like uh, all those main characters, and uh, uh, especially standing next to Jenny all the time. You know, it's like you yeah. know she, she's the she's the she's the star. And uh, again, I hope you get a chance to interview her. Um, just, uh, that's the goal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and just think a few years from now, you know, like everybody will be trying to interview me, and you'll be like, oh, I interviewed him first. Time. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but it's been absolutely. Amazing. I hope you have a good rest of your evening. Yeah, rest of your day. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. You too. Uh hope you don't have to work too hard. Uh and, and feel free to stay in touch and reach out again. Um, Thank you very much. Yeah. Bye. Bye.